Happy New Year. I wish I can give you some score for a midterm, but it's in progress, okay? Um, probably, probably within next week, uh, beginning of next week, the score will be out. What is the deadline for withdrawal? 18, right? I believe. I think it's 18. Anyway, I graded probably 10 people already. Two of them got full score in my part. So not bad. Not bad at all. So I guess I can give you more tougher examination next time. All right. Uh, since, since we have skipped our class for almost two weeks, let's uh, review just a little what, where we are right now, okay? And we start talking about uh, energy transport and in similar manner as the mo momentum transport, the energy transport is also divided into two parts, convective part and conductive part. Conductive part can be represented by a Fourier law. It's a function of the driving force in energy transport is uh, temperature difference, right? So conduction is represented by Q, and Q equal to minus K del T. Driving force is temperature gradient or temperature difference. In conduction, we, don't, we do not need any moving of the media, right? And then convection part. In convection, the media or fluid must move, and therefore it carries the energy with it. Along the way, there are two kinds of energy that we concern. First is kinetic energy, and then internal energy. The moving of the fluid, which carry these kinds of energy, also results in work. We call this one flow work, right? So convective part is consisting of two terms. The energy term that is carried with the flow of the fluid, and also work term, the, the flow work term. These two terms combined with the conduction part, you get the combined flux. And then you, you take the combined flux in the balance. For shear balance, we have input minus output plus work from the external work done on the system and then added by energy production term. And last couple weeks ago, we derived the equation and I show you that the term regarding the external work or mechanical work can be represented by the potential energy. So potential energy is already taking account by that term. And then the last term, the energy production term, is the work done in other form rather than mechanical work. All kind of other kind of work like electrical work or nuclear work are taking account by that term. These four terms combined are shear balance, right? And I show you a couple um, examples. Start with example without convection, just the conduction and energy term in terms of electric electricity. That show you how can how we can incorporate the external work term. And then moving on to another examples containing both conduction and convection. In that case, when you have both conduction and convection, that means your fluid is moving. That also means you need to concern momentum transport as well as energy transport, right? So every time you see a problem containing convection, it is consisting of two transport phenomena, energy transport and momentum transport, right? And the question comes to which equation for transport phenomena, like the momentum transport or energy transport, supposed to be solved first? It depends on problems. It depends on your assumption. If you can assume something, 
that, for example, for the problem that is natural convection, temperature difference or temp high temperature cause density to be lower and fluid rise. Rising of the fluid cause the movement of the fluid. Such kind of problem, you need to know temperature first, otherwise you cannot solve for velocity profile. In that case, we usually give some kind of assumption to get um, temperature profile first. Start with energy transport phenomena. And then another kind of problem like forced convection, the problem where you flow the fluid uh, with relatively fast enough uh, velocity and then at the same time you get conduction and convection. That kind of thing, that kind of problem usually we assume that the density and viscosity does not change much with respect to temperature and therefore we can solve for velocity profile first. We did that because if you do not know the velocity profile, we cannot incorporate it in convection term. So it really depends on the problem. Okay? Now, that's uh, in chapter 10. For chapter 11, we set up the shell balance in terms of smallest shell possible and then set up the equation. Last two weeks, we talked about two kinds of equation regarding energy. First is mechanical energy balance. Mechanical energy balance was obtained by using equation of mo motion dotted with velocity. Because momentum term, when you dot it with velocity, you will get kinetic energy. Okay? Once you derive or once you dot every term in equation of motion with velocity, you will obtain new equation called equation of mechanical energy. Bring that equation and subtract it from overall energy balance. Then you get another new equation called equation of internal energy. In the equation of internal energy, every term is dealing with the change in internal energy with respect to different kind of transport phenomena. Right? That come to this equation. Okay? And we stopped there last time. So, are you ready to go on? All right. Um, last time, I did not emphasize on this term. Um, this is substantial derivative of temperature. By meaning or by definition, substantial derivative can be written as a function of two terms, partial derivative with respect to time, and velocity term dot with gradient. Okay? So if you write down substantial derivative of temperature, you just put temperature in there. If you write down substantial derivative of velocity, you get velocity in there, for example. Okay? Then, this is conduction term. This is net transport by conduction. This is, um, essentially this term is relate, related to um, convection. In the book, in the textbook, if you come back and read the textbook, this term is divided into two parts plus K, I think, something like this, okay? These two terms combined are directly related to convection and um, work, the flow work, okay? Normally, this term for incompressible fluid or for ideal gas, for, for conventional fluid, this term is negligible. Okay, you see this term in probably in advanced transport phenomena. And then leaving only this term. This term is called dissipation. Energy dissipation term. It is directly related to um, viscous heat. Okay, inside here, it's a function of velocity. It's a function of velocity. 
the dissipation term itself, just this term, can be written using equation. If you write the equation alone, it might take two lines. Okay? It is shown in your appendix as well. But anyway, if you think that in your problem, the viscous heat is negligible, then you can drop the whole term. Okay? So, again, so you don't need to worry about the double dot there. Next term is the change in density with respect to time, to temperature. Again, I, I will go on to the special cases and you see. The whole equation here, the equation of internal energy, can be used as a whole equation, but it's rather complicated. You can see you have partial differential of logarithm with respect to another logarithm. It's a little bit complicated. So normally, when we use this kind of equation, we will try to find special case for, for, for them. For example, if your fluid is ideal gas, if the fluid is ideal, if you have ideal gas, okay, normally, you, you see that density of any gas um, decrease when you increase temperature, right? So therefore, this term, once you plug in ideal gas law in here, you get the differential term to be minus one, all right? If you replace this into that equation and then disregard the viscous heat term, so this term is dropped first. What you get would be something like this. The <coughs> accumulation term of energy equal to the conduction term. And conduction term normally can be represented by Fourier law. So I'm going to replace Q by minus K del T. So minus and minus cancel out. You get K del so this one can be written as minus K del T, right? This minus and that minus cancel out. K can be brought out. Del here dot another del, you get del square. And del square right there. And then T. Okay? Del square, again, is operator but it is scalar, it's scalar operator. Next term, the dissipation term is dropped, so we just neglect that, and then we have this term, the differential term becomes minus one. So minus and minus, you get plus. Substantial derivative of pressure with respect to time. All right. Again, this term can be written as partial differential of pressure with respect to time plus V dot del P. 